Welcome back, everybody. Yep, it's that time of the week again, bitch. Welcome back to another sunny, saucy, heat wave death of, in New York episode of Old School, New School Comedy Podcast. And I am your shit talking host, Christy Miller. And we are broadcasting here from Broadway Comedy Club. Hello, right here in New York City. And with me this week is uh, an old friend of mine. I met him a few years ago through my bestie, Gina Savage, and he did my podcast back in lockdown when we were all chained to our desks and couldn't leave. So, <laughs> um, very funny. Did comedy for 15 years up until the pandemic and then took a break, and now he's back and we love him. Give it up for Lance Weiss. That was a very kind intro. I give great intro. That yeah, was very kind. Felt felt nice. It should. Yeah. Yeah. People think. Yeah. That, they're like you give. Sometimes they think I'm not talking about them and somebody else is coming. Yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> I forgot we met through G, uh, through Gina. She's yeah. amazing. Yeah. She's an awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen her in a few years. Yeah, she's doing great. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah, my bestie. So Gina Savage for anybody that doesn't know. Awesome. She's yeah. One of the most incredible. Uh, um, anchors or uh, just a really significant piece of the comedy scene in New York City for the last 25 years. Yeah, and she understands comedy. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are in it who don't get it. Yes. They're just in it and they've been even around a long time. You're like, I don't I don't know if they know what's happening. No, she because, gets it. Well, because they're in it for the wrong reasons. Oh, there's a lot of people in it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. They become bookers because they couldn't get either. They couldn't do stand up and they sucked at it. So they became a booker or they just didn't have any friends in school and they yes. wanted to be a booker so they could have some kind of power because they're not good enough to be an agent. There is a lot of that as well. Oh, yeah, that's there's rampant. all kinds. Yeah, yeah. So, thanks for having me. Oh, sorry, I hit the oh, mic. Sorry about right. that, my, my, I'm trying not to move. Yeah, he's, he's beating up on his lavalier mic. It's so fancy. Let me put yeah. it on this side, darling. I'm gonna go just like this and not move. There you go. Also, this podcast is maybe one of the closer ones I've done. Yeah. I think our knees are hitting from time to time, yeah. and it's just, it's intimate. This is an intimate setup. Is it though? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's going to be a, like a UFC fight in about 10 minutes. Because <laughs> I can kill everybody in New York. It's very sad that I put the man in Manhattan. Yeah, I like that you, um, on was it on your Instagram, you, you the, or maybe this tagline you've had for a long time, like the strongest woman in yep. comedy or strongest something. Strongest female comedian is yeah, my hashtag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to think if there's anyone else, and you, you're probably right. I mean, who, who, who's even, I don't even know who was even close. No. I mean, there's girls that work out, but that, that's just, they work out. I fucking lift. Like, yeah, there's a yeah, whole yeah, different yeah. world massive, for yeah, me in the gym. Different. Yeah, Yeah. They're like, oh my God, I'm wearing an outfit. And I, like, they're the ones that show up to the gyms with uh, ring lights and, and phones sure, and they, tripods yeah. and glam squads and a makeup crew. And I show up with chalk. Squat shoes, now, do you, knee sleeves. <laughs> now, do you, you could almost say that a very similar, this is a comedy podcast, right? It's yes. A, you could almost say it's very similar to comedy. Like there's real bodybuilders or real lifters working, yeah. they're in it for the craft of sculpting and body, like. Well, I don't do bodybuilding. That's a whole nother sport. I'm in powerlifting. That's my sport. Listen, to me, it's the exact same, but I realize they're different. They're different. I can tell by the way you yeah, look. Good yeah, night. yeah, yeah. Boom. When does, <laughs> when does the podcast start? The, tomorrow. Um, the, um, uh, yeah, the, um, but, but like people who really, yeah. really, and then there's the Instagram or the TikTok mm -hmm. worker mm -hmm. out. And you can say yeah. the same thing for comedy. There's people that love the craft, yep. who love the, the, uh, the crafting a joke and getting on stage at the best place or the worst place. Yeah. Then there's people who like will get up and it's about the cameras and the TikToks and the yeah. Instagram show. There was a kid that went on stage at the comic strip one night and there's an audience, right? There's yeah. an actual breathing, sure. living audience in front of him. Yeah. He sets up his tripod and his phone and he does his whole act to the phone. Oh, uh, it's wild. I was like, what the fuck is happening yeah. right now? Yeah. Well, to me, everything, I don't like any of this. I don't like podcasting. I don't like tweeting. Good I, don't, night. <laughs> I don't like YouTube. Like, I, I, I like it. I enjoy it. But to me, it's all for the end goal. I don't know how much this is on camera. It's for the end goal of the stage. Right. You do. Uh, you, you do. To me, all these things, they, they can all be fun making sketches. They, they're all fun. Yeah. But it's all for that. It's yeah. all to get to there yeah. in my mind, not the reverse. Well, now it does. Now, since the yeah. pandemic, it's shifted to how many followers do you have? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How viral your videos have gone. And it, and it becomes that and instead of like 
you know, booking a solid lineup. And back to Gina. Yeah, yeah. Who gets it? Like she's been booking stand up here and for 25 years, but mm -hmm. in the industry, and now she's one of the currently one of the managers of the Comedy mm -hmm. Cellar. But she doesn't do any of the booking there. That's all Essie. But at the same time, when she was running this club here for yeah. many years, and then she ran West Side Comedy mm -hmm, Club mm -hmm. after that, before the pandemic. And then even before then, she opened comics. She worked at Caroline. She's been around, yeah, forever. New York, Boston Comedy Club. You know, like, it's like she's been in the game for so long and so embedded in it. But she gets comedy. She loves comedy. And she doesn't do it for the fame. No. Or for the notoriety in the comedy scene. Like, look at me, I'm a booker. Sure. You have to kiss my mm -hmm. ass. No, she's just like, I fucking love this. This is what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. I don't even care. And she likes good comics and yeah. good comedy. She understands when someone's good and where to put mm -hmm, them on a mm -hmm. lineup. Yeah, yeah. But just back to that point about this sure. um, this uh, kid you're saying into the phone, like, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. They're missing the whole point of, like, once you made it to the live show, like, th to me, that's it. Yeah, that's why you're doing course. That's why you're yelling it. I get they're yelling into the phone, but it's like, then, then, yeah, you maybe you set up a camera to record, but like it's about the show, the live show. Yeah. You know. Anyway. Yeah. No, you're a hundred percent right. It's all about the show, and it's like you put on a good show. And I remember like talking to Al Martin many years mm -hmm. ago, who owned this club. He passed away a few months ago. God rest his soul. Um, he, him, and I were having a conversation one night, and he was like, you know, Christy, this is years ago, many years ago. He goes, Christy, if you're funny, I'm going to book mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm because my club is in the heart of Times Square. So I thrive on good shows because tourists come back or they tell their friends and so on and mm -hmm. referrals, then they come back. It's not about the big names there that come through. It's about they had a good time, they watch funny comics, and they're gonna come back. And I remember for years meeting the same tourist. Oh, I was here two years ago. Isn't when that I crazy? Saw you. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was so funny. Mm -hmm. And it was like that at the comedy store where I grew up, you know, like all the tourists would come in and like, oh, you hosted the Memorial Day weekend last year on Sunday, and we were so hoping to see you again. And wow, here you are. Yeah. And it was like a cool experience. This is like back, you know, 20 years ago at least. And, uh, but it was a really cool, like, you know, it's it's that. It's that word of mouth. It's that this is the cool place to go. And Al would always book it as, I don't give a shit if you're famous. Sure. Or if you have one fucking Instagram follower. Mm -hmm. Are you funny? Then get on my stage and put on a fucking Yeah. Show. It's a little bit like a restaurant. Yeah. Like if it's a good meal, it's a good meal. Yeah. Like you don't go to you don't go eat at a restaurant in the city because of the famous people on the wall. No. Maybe that's interesting to some people. You go because you get like that draws you in, but it doesn't retain you. Exactly. Because if the food stinks, you're like, I'm never coming never back. Never going here. back. Yeah. But if you go and it's if you go to their places, I mean, this is not just New York. There's any restaurant. You go because it's a solid. You can count out to be a solid eight out of ten every time. Fully. Yeah. Like I love hole in the wall restaurants. Yeah. Because they really, they don't give a shit about the glitz and glam. Yeah. They're worried about what's on that fucking It's where some plate. of the best food is, partic yeah. particularly in New York. Some yeah. of the, uh, particularly um, maybe downtown in the village or, or that there's just looks like. Up in the Bronx, dude. Bronx Up in Harlem. As well. Yeah. There's some amazing hole in the walls yeah. in Queens. I've been to some shitholes that were like, oh my God, can I move in? Yeah. No, you're, oh, Queens has a, well, I mean the whole city, the whole, yeah. the whole the thing. Whole, all, yeah. Because like I grew up in, you know, in California and in LA. We would find these little tiny rotted out hole in the wall, mom and pop Mexican places. And grandma was in the cook kitchen yeah, yeah, cooking. Yeah, yeah. The, the husband and wife were running the place and the kids were bussing tables. And it was like, yeah, this is like, a, like I'm at their house. You grew up in LA? I grew up, uh, I li grew up in San Francisco. Okay. And yeah. then mm -hmm. when I was 24, yeah, 24, I moved to Los Angeles. Wow, to and pursue. It, Art. To pursue, yeah, pursue art Arts. and yeah. acting, and, and then the I went stuff. to then my best friend at the time, Kiro. I've told this story on the show before. Uh -huh. She was like, "If you don't get on fucking stage yes. and do something, you're driving me crazy talking about it, and you're so funny everywhere you go, go." So I went to the comedy store. I said, "All right, I'll go there if I get a job." I'm supposed to be there, I'll do stand-up. If yes. I don't get the job, that means I'm not supposed to be there and I'll yes. keep it moving. Yeah. I walked in the door, had the job in 30 seconds. Wow, man. And I was there for 10 years. I, wow. no, I only waitressed for a year, but yeah. then I was a paid regular. And then you're in there doing yeah. it. Wow. You know, I worked at Caroline's for several years. Oh, you did? Well, I, I, I was a doorman at the DC Improv. Okay. In, as a ticket taker. Nice. And then I worked at Caroline's for, I'd say, four and a half years. I started in the box office, and then I worked in the in the back office. Like, okay. Like Monday through Friday, right. 10 to 6. Like, nice. jo like, like job, a regular job. Like job, job. Mm -hmm. Like the, all the business of the club. Right. And then I would perform at night. So, yeah, I, I kind of know the, you know, 
that, yeah. that side as well. Yeah, Talk about a great learning experience. One, the store, amazing. Caroline's also amazing. I, I, I learned, I, go ahead. I was say, I worked every single job at the comedy store. I believe that, yeah, yeah. Mitzi made me her all around yeah. girl. So I did everything. I worked door. I, I, didn't, I wasn't a doorman because that was a guy's job. Sure, like she, yeah. that was her thing. So I did cover booths. I was a waitress. I uh, worked in accounting. I worked as the assistant talent coordinator with uh -huh. Scott Day. I ran errands. I did, um, what are those other jobs in there I did too? There's a bunch of other shit. Oh, uh, there's graphic design. There's a, hey, we need someone to pick up a new TV for us to pu yeah. plug next go to the stage. Go drive this to go get there's Mitzi some a, shit. Yeah. Go get a comics coming in from yeah. the airport. Go hang, go out, with, go hang out with Mitzi. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you learn, particularly those, sorry about the mic. That's all right. Particularly the, the clubs we're mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, these are led the the, um, the comedy store, Caroline's. These are places that are as as good as it gets. They were the top. They're the highest echelon. You know, you know the comedy store has been there fifty three years, fifty two years. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, it was nineteen seventy six. No, nineteen seventy four. No, nineteen seventy two. Mitzi and Sammy opened Unreal. the OR room, and it was still Ciro's. Yeah. Nineteen seventy six. They bought the whole building from Ciro's and turned it into the Crazy, comedy store. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah. So it's been fifty two years. Cause that it's is wild. Yeah. But you look. I think every comic should work at a comedy club. You should. You, you see learn how insane it, amounts. You see what happens behind the scenes. You see how it's built and what people respond to. Like. Back in the day, you know, because I moved out here because I was opening for Paul Mooney. Yes. So and big Caroline, Caroline's, big yeah. Caroline's, right? Yeah. I think I actually probably made the flyers because I was director of graphic design uh -huh. uh, in the back office. So I think I, I think I remember putting your name on before sure. I knew you, probably. putting your name on that flyer because <laughs> it was every other weekend. Yeah. And you know, I don't got to tell you. I, I believe if I'm correct. He would do the Laugh Factory in L.A. Yeah. One well, weekend. He, he would. Uh, well, he was really close with Jamie Masada. Yes. And he would help out Jamie sometimes, but he was really a store. He would he would have the Kennison spot at the store. Yeah, yeah, in sure. In the main room. And he would do things for Jamie. Yeah. Like bigger stuff. But he was at the store every night. Yeah, he's a guy that just loved comedy. Yeah. Because then, then then when he'd be in New York, I do remember putting your name on there over and over and over, like yeah. on the flyers. When he was in New York, he'd come into the club during the day. Yeah. And he would just hang out in the back yep. office. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it'd be me and Paul. I mean, you know Paul uh, way oh, better oh, than I do. Yeah. But it would just be me and Paul sitting there because, like, hey, Caroline would be bouncing around or yeah, Lewis, Lewis or is doing Greg. Shit, Everybody's doing so shit. So it'd just be yeah. me and Paul sitting there. It's like 2 p.m. I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> he just wants to be. He just loved because yeah. him and Caroline were so close. Yes. Uh -huh. And when she was in South Street Seaport, when she moved yep. from Chelsea, mm -hmm. uh, they started a late night show. Yeah. And Mooney started late nights. There was mm -hmm. never, there was no such thing as a 12:30 show in New York. Uh, and his were late. And Mooney started that. And yeah. it was a big thing and it was huge and it, he became the king of the late night like he started that for caroline and that became that was mooney spot every other weekend yep, we had four nights for, for hundreds of years yeah so he was there for 30 years yeah yeah man that's crazy that's crazy you know what yeah i saw him once on 125th street <laughs> yeah uh-huh what a crazy lived up there yeah but what an interesting you know i kind of knew him and then just to walk by him on 125th Street, because that's like, yeah. I don't even know how to describe it, but it's like, that's that's, that's it. That's the heart of that's Harlem it. at the that, time. And yeah. he is the guy yeah. of that. Like, he's the mayor yeah. of that. Yeah, I mean, you've got to have a million Paul Mooney oh, stories, I'm sure. Yeah, I have a few. I'll share one. I'd share, share one, I've because everybody's Car heard all mine. Yeah, right? Caroline's, we were doing a prom show. Um, oh, I miss those prom shows. <laughs> yeah, so you go on the prom kids that, you know, instead of their parents pay for them to maybe come. I've done a lot of prom shows here, yeah. um, you know, in, in the past. They, you know, instead of they, their kids drinking and drugs and whatever, even though it's all happening anyway, yeah. but they bring them to the comedy club as like an, a safer environment or whatever. Anyway, I'm supposed to do that at Caroline's, and so it's going to be like 3 a.m. Paul Moody's yes. on stage. You might probably actually I was probably show. there because I remember nights when you yeah. couldn't get off and the prom kids were sitting in the lounge. 3 a.m. It hasn't even gone on yet. Yeah. <laughs> so we're there watching, and the room's about half full because Paul was there so much yeah. that, like, he was there every other weekend. So yeah. the room, and we're half full at, like, 1230. At, you know, it's 2 a.m., so we'll say, and some people have already left because they're getting tired. A lot tired. of people left because they got tired. Yeah, let's say there's still 150 people there, but let's yeah. say the room is, like, it's not – Pack, pack, pack. But it's like 150, 100, 150. And they've already wrapped checks. Oh, uh, the show's been, I mean, yeah, you know, been over he's already been hour. on stage two and a half hours. <laughs> so, so at one point, I'm just sitting there watching because I'm, I was just, I lived at Caroline's. I was there all day. Then I perform at night. I probably saw you. I'm sure I'm, I've, there's no way we did. But I literally yeah. would be there from 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. until at least midnight for four years. I, I went home to, I lived in Harlem. I took the train home, slept, came right back. And right. I was there all day, all right. night, you know. So, but I was watching Paul. It was just me. I was just sitting there. And then I just look over on my left, 
you know, yeah, I think it's two thirty in the morning, and it's like, it, you know, it's 100, 150 people. It's just, it's like, you know. Yeah. So I look to my left, and sitting next to me is Most Def. Uh huh. Then sitting next to him is Chappelle. Uh huh. Then this is the great one. Yeah. Sitting next to him is James Lipton from the <laughs> Actors Studio. The guy from. <laughs> So it's just me, most Dev Chappelle, James Lipton watching Mooney. Yeah. And you're like, what an incredible. Yep. So my point is, that's why you should work at a comedy club or be in, because you just get to do stuff. Like, that's a crazy story. Yeah. And nobody would believe that. Yeah. But you would believe that being at the comedy store mm-hmm. and being around Paul Mooney all those years. That's yeah. just a night. Yeah. You know? It's just, you know, I got to be raised by the highest of high echelon. The greats. You know, the greats were there when I was there. And these are guys I grew up watching. And all of a sudden, like, you know, I'm I'm 53, so growing up on Saturday Which morning, I just realized, like, a couple weeks ago. I literally <laughs> thought she was, like, 38, maybe maybe 40. I thought you were, like, my age. I'm nice. 40. Nice. Yeah, yeah I, I act it, but, yeah. you know, it's, uh, But I grew up on, like, you know, like, the older comics. Like, there was a comic named Willie Tyler and Lester. Mm-hmm. Do you remember him? Uh, I have a really good comedy Rolodex, but that, uh, I don't know. It was a black know. guy, older black guy with a, with a puppet. Sounds familiar. And he was very clean, very sweet, family oriented, yeah. and he did Saturday morning stuff on the kids shows on Saturday mornings, and that's when I was a kid. Then I go to the comedy store, and I'm, there's Willie Tyler and Lester, Crazy. and it's like my childhood is surrounding me. All these comics I grew up on are surrounding me, and we're all colleagues now. Like we're all hanging out. They're taking me under their wing, and you know, I used to tell Willie to he'd, he'd walk in with Lester in the suitcase, and I go, "Is he in there?" <laughs> And he's like, yeah. And he played right into it. Yeah, of he? course. I go, yeah. I go, is he trying to sneak in the club so I don't, he doesn't see me because we fucked last night and he doesn't want to pretend like he knows me and he's dying. Yeah, sure. And I said, tell him that he owes me, bitch. <laughs> and that's your childhood who you yeah. grew up watching, yeah. right? You were saying. So it's like, wow, just to be, to be, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Like, you know, when I was uh, 19, was it? Yeah, 89. I'm a big Cher fan. Everybody knows I'm a big Cher fan. And, uh, I went and saw Cher at the Oakland Coliseum okay. on her Heart of Stone tour, the Turn Back Time Got album. It. Yeah, yeah, right? wow. So my best friend and I are there, and it's you know it's sold out. There's like you know forty thousand people, and there's you know and there's drag queens everywhere dressed as her, and it's hilarious. We're having a good time, and there was a comedian that opened for her. Yeah, and his name was Dom Irera. Mm-hmm. And so when I get to the comedy store, we get talking about Cher, and he goes, "You know, I opened that show," and I went, and all of a sudden. Yeah, all yeah, these yeah. tapes come back in mm-hmm. my head and I go I was at the Oakland Coliseum I remember you there he goes really and I go oh my god you made me pee and we, and we kind of bonded after yeah, that yeah then you're like, in yeah and it was just like cool and like you know Dice and I were very close for a long time and uh, you know Mooney was like my father Joe Rogan was like my big bro him and Joey Diaz and I mean Mooney as your um, father I don't, yeah I don't know what to describe it as he's one of the people like there's like a tell there's Mooney. There, there's only a few that I, I shouldn't say. There's a few because there's a lot, but there's a few that are like, that's it. Like Moon, like that's as There's hot, no more Moonies. That's it. You'll never have another Paul Mooney, no matter how hard Chappelle tries yeah. or how. I mean, Cat's pretty close, but Cat is not quite Mooney. Cat's Mooney in the sense of calling people out. But Cat has such a huge platform and so much money, sure. he's not going to fail from it. You know what I mean? Where Mooney didn't have the notoriety because yeah. there was no and social media. And just everything he did. And he would tell like, Hollywood off constantly in meetings. I would hit him. I'd be like, stop it. Yeah, Get the did. check yeah, and then yeah, you yeah, fucking yeah. cuss him out. Uh-huh. Oh, homie, they're just white trash. Yeah, uh-huh. them, homie. Oh, uh-huh. racist as Hollywood. You know, And it was just like, stop. Get the money. Then yell at yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was like, um, there's just no better. We used to call him the professor at the comedy. Yeah, of course. The, yeah, or a, a, a tell today might be one of the one of the professors. A tell is one of the greats. Did yeah. you see his new show, Hot Cross Buns? It's I have special. seen it. Yeah, it's uh-huh. so funny. Yeah, oh, so it's, it's so, so good. brilliant, and it's like you know that's and to me it's one of my favorite specials. Maybe I don't know about you, but because of how he did it. Yes. In a club. Sure. Intimate. He didn't like try to showboat. Mm-hmm. He wasn't trying to do this big old thing and make it about him. He was just doing a special because he loves stand up. Yeah, and if you get to be around some of these some of these people, you you it's the best education you could get. It's like being around uh, like a president or something. 
like if you're studying politics, you get to like shadow a president. Like if right. you're Ron Mooney, you're like, this is this. this where, is the highest. What are you going to learn from this person over here? Yeah. You're learning from the the as the upper echelon of yeah. of the way. And you're in it, so you're actually learning. It's amazing. Experience. It's experience amazing. Experience is the best teacher, and it's like. Mooney used to tell me when I was a young, young Jack, when he took me under his wing instantly, people were freaked out how we bonded. Yeah. And and I was just like, you know, we just, we felt like we knew each other, yeah. like we were a family. Like mm -hmm. he was telling me I was a stepdaughter and all this shit. And That's amazing. And uh, he goes, honey, I don't care if there's one person on that stage or a thousand, uh -huh. do your shit. Isn't that amazing? And that was one of the first things I learned in my first year of stand up. And he also said, no one can tell you how to be funny. Don't listen to them. You'll find it on that stage. Yeah. There's no class. There's no book that tells you how to be you. You'll find it getting on the mic every fucking night. And he would come to shitty mics with me in L.A. I believe that. Yeah, sure. Like we, And he would go up, too, which is hilarious, darling. <laughs> you know, who? Are, um, now that we're talking about him, uh -huh. not, not the style is obviously different, but some sure. are maybe kind of in that vein, like a Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory's a legend. Yeah. And he's he's a real like truth teller. He's a storyteller. Mooney was kind of like watching the news. Mm -hmm. You know, Mooney was like that reporter on the news or like like the like that generation's daily show because he would take politics and current events and things that were happening in pop culture or society and he would report it back to you in such a way that was, you know, like reporting the news of the day. Mm -hmm but it was also so fucking funny and just brilliant. And it was like a history lesson at the same time. You know what also is good? I'm just I'm just thinking, cause we were talking about like working at the clubs, like why it's good for like a younger comic too, or, or anybody even, mm -hmm. I've been doing it 20 years almost. And it's still, be, because once you have somebody like Paul Mooney mm -hmm. tell you, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. This is because there's so many in, in life and mm -hmm. comedy, there's so many egos. There's so many, uh. you might go to a club in Denver or, or or San Antonio, and the people give you a little weird attitude. Right. Or like they get everywhere you go, there's weird attitude. Oh because yeah. Because just there's because that's their territory, and they're very territorial because that's all they have. And then when the outsider comes in, they're, they're like, threat. "Who are you?" Yeah. Yeah. So then when you walk in there and you go, no, "I'm fucking with Paul Mooney. I'm Paul Mooney trained. Like, yeah. what are you gonna do? This uh, Steve from San Antonio is gonna <laughs> tell me that I don't. He, he's been doing, he's been running the club for three years. He's gonna tell me what to do. Yeah. I've been working with Mooney. For, like, the, yeah. go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. not not that you would, but in your head, sometimes yeah. you need that because there are so many so much oh. machismo and and, and posturing. Yeah, and, and, you and know. especially being a woman. Oh my God, I can't get it. Uh, yeah, like you're a threat. Like, oh, you can't talk like uh -huh. that. I've had clubs tell me you need to tone it down. You're a bit much. Yeah. What? Why? Because I'm being myself. I'm a yeah. bit much. Get and because one of the greatest of comics of all time, like, wants Trained me to work me with it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, go fuck it. I, this. It gives you a confidence. Like, I know. Because you go to these places, these, these, there'll be new owners everywhere. Right, You're of course. In Pennsylvania, someone's like, well, this, Chrissy, this is how you got to do it. You really, <laughs> you got to, this is, you want to know comedy. It's like, yeah. fuck, go oh, fuck yourself. Yeah. I worked at the store with Moon. You, with, yeah. And it's like, you don't know. And it gives, and not that you say that, but in your brain, you go, fuck off. I yeah. know what I'm doing. It do, I don't internalize their fucking exactly. insecurities. Exactly, exactly. I don't. And and usually, like, when I when I've done shows in the rarity where someone gets upset, and I don't really say anything. They get upset. It's just because of my presence, how mm -hmm. I carry my, because I'm a confident woman. I don't care what you think of mm -hmm. me. This is comedy. I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. We're here to have fun. And my motto is, in life, I have four things that I live through. My friend said, you should get that sewn in a pillow. I say, if it doesn't uh, put a roof over my head, mm -hmm. doesn't pay my bills, doesn't put clothes on my back or eat my pussy, it has no power oh, over me, so right? Funny. So it's like, if you put it down that lame, like I don't trip on people that don't like me in the audience. And I usually, when they heckle or something, I build them up as I destroy them. Yeah. Because I never want to ruin their experience at a club yes. either. And that's a big thing with young comics. They get angry and they lash out uh -huh. and they attack. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's just yeah. a heckle. Relax. Yeah. Like, t you know, take it in stride. Let it roll off, man. And it's like, yeah. it's very scary to watch. And yeah. They, but I, but I, because I'm confident and people try to strong arm me because I'm a woman, they wouldn't do it to you because you're a dude as much as they would to me. Yeah, you're gonna get it more. Yeah, yeah you're gonna 100%. get it more. I'll get, it, I'll get my own things, but you're gonna get yeah, you, that. Just you as have a woman in comedy, things. woman yeah. in life, but yeah. woman in comedy, yeah, yeah, you're gonna get. Yeah. You have different trials to deal yeah. with that I don't. Yeah. And you deal with your shit on your end, and yeah. it's like, okay, because everybody has shit, and that's what people don't understand. That's life, yeah. Yeah, and that's human. why. 
you know, and so um, because you've been doing it so long and, and you're like, you're really clear headed on, I love it. And do you, I, I have a feel, like I have this, I'm sorry, you guys, but I have this thing about like, like certain, li like all female lineups, for example, because okay. that's what I would be doing, right? I yes. would be on those I don't want to see that show. I cannot. I don't want to see it. all anything lineup. Yeah. I don't want to see all I'm black. I don't want to see all white. I, I don't want to see, see all men. I don't want to see that show, period. Yeah. I understand they have their place. Maybe if you're on tour with. It's a, it's a, if it's a, 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 a genre type tour or if it's like a, like a, like an ensemble tour. Yeah, of course. Sure. But it's like for me, for clubs. If go, I'm here, I don't want to see any of these lineups. Yeah. All gay, all women, all black, all, all white. white. I, I don't, don't want, want to see all it. straight white men, which is me. I don't want to see that show. It's the same thing over it and stinks. over. It stinks. It's not yeah. a good show. It's like seeing a movie with the same lines over and over. Yeah. Something. It's like I want to see a movie with now yeah. we're in a cornfield. I like, now we're in, you know. Yeah, I like seeing diversity in lineups because it's fun because then you get different perspectives. It's a good it's, show. What makes a good show? Yeah, and it's also good for the audience to see, hear different perspectives if they're not used to it either. To hear like somebody else's point, like wow, I never thought of it that way because yeah. that's their experience. Yeah, and that's the coolest part. But it's like I hate when people go, "Oh, Christy, you know, we'll book you, but it's going to be like a like I've had like clubs go, yeah, if you want a headline, oh, why don't we just make it like a female night, like ladies' night?" And I went, "No, I won't yeah. do it. Sorry, I just want to find do a somebody good else. Comedy show. I want a good show, and you get me a good feature and a good opener, like a good host. I don't give a shit what they identify as, as long as they're funny." I don't care. I actually do care a little bit uh -huh. because I want, I don't want, if I get to choose, I don't, if let's say I, I'm headlining somewhere, I don't want to, I don't want two straight white guys going ahead of me. I, well, that's, I, and that I, was, yeah, and that's what yeah, I was trying to boring. get to. It's like, yeah, it's boring. Yeah, it's like, I don't care. It's all women. It's a lady. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just, just fucking, who can, I can't. It's too much for me because. For me, what I find, and you know, I love everybody. I don't give a shit. Yeah. There's room for the ta at the table for all of us. And you live in New York, where it's people. You people are people. Yeah, I don't. Know? I don't care. And I grew up in California, where nobody gave a shit. Yeah. You know, and it's like I don't care. And I'm from the comedy store, so I know. I know who I am as a woman. I'm mm -hmm. 53. I've been through a lot of shit in my life, and if I haven't figured it out by now, I need to stop. But I'm very secure with who I am. I'm very content in my life, and it's like when you get around a bunch of other comics and I'm, and I know you've felt this too because it's not a, a gender uh, mm -hmm. assist it's not a gender isolated incident it's just a comedic isolated incident basically you know and it probably happens in the corporate world too I'm sure it happens everywhere because it's human nature mm -hmm. but it's like when you get around a bunch of other female comics and sometimes they don't aren't as nice to other female comics sure as they are to the guy comics mm. because there's no competition and that, to me that makes me laugh but i've been i've i've dealt with girls go not liking me just because they were also a female comedian and i'm like that's the dumbest me? thing ever it's yeah. so dumb Stupid. it's like what are you doing if we stick together we can make this even more powerful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's what they don't understand but it's like i explained this to a club owner here in New York City, a new club owner, yeah. who got rid of their bookers that they had that helped build their empire and hired some girl at the time. And and these guys were really great. They understood. They fucking packed the rooms. They knew how they had a whole thing. They were great. And then they fired them and they hired this girl who was a young comic, probably four or five years, I don't know. And uh, she literally told lies to me to this club owner about about me that, that I crazy? called a showrunner a fag and I made fun of him and he started crying and I was like what I go what showrunner I go I haven't done any of her shows yeah she's booked yeah she hasn't booked me since she took over the club yeah and I'm like what is she talking about and I said you know what I don't need your fucking club shove it up here I go that's how you want to run it dude I'm out. And he goes, no, 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 no. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. So then I sat with the other owners, two owners. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I thought hiring a girl was going to change everything because a lot of the women were upset about sexual harassment and, and men treating them mean. And I said, no, let me tell you something about men and women, especially in comedy or anywhere. A male booker will be nicer to a female comedian than a f female booker to a female saying, comedian yeah. because... That girl is in competition with that girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, in her head, like there's still two girls because two girls don't play together nice. And they say three girls can't play together at all because one of them will play the other two against mm. each other. And they always want to be the prettiest one in the room. I could care less. I just want to tell jokes. Yes. And so I don't have that. So I said the guy booker will be nicer to the girl because bottom line, she has a vagina, he has a penis. 
And as long as they both have those two body parts, then there's always that shot in that guy's head he can fuck her. Whether it's true or not, whether he believes it or not, but there's still that underlying thing that he could still fuck mm -hmm, her at mm -hmm. one point. So he's going to be a little nicer to her to not shoot, to not ruin his shot in mm -hmm. the future. She has nothing like that against us, so she's she's fighting for that. Same it's competition. Yeah, versus, it's all yeah, competition. Yeah. And you're I almost know talking like a cave, cave, uh, <laughs> like uh, it's so natural. Uh, yeah. Back in. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's all ingrained in our DNA. Yeah. It's all about that, you know. And it's just it's so silly, but you know what? So I'm just going, you know, what? run your clubs the way you want. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And that's what makes you a good comic. That's what makes the best comics. Because I don't care about the rooms. Yeah, I, I love stand up. That's the way I feel. That's the way. Uh, yeah, I, all these rooms are relevant to me. I've done every club in the city. I've been in every club, out me of every too. club, back at every club, yep. out of every club. Yep. I ran a show for many years, which was very yep. popular. That I don't do that now. I don't like. I've been in every alt room in Brooklyn, Queens, like uh, in the Bronx, in Hoboken, in Jersey yep. City, like yep. Staten Island. I've done all the rooms. Yeah. I've crushed in all the rooms. Mm -hmm. I've bombed hard in all the rooms. <laughs> well. The thing about bombing, which you know, is you actually take a chance. If you don't bomb, you have to. Yeah, you're, you're playing it too safe, and you're not growing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I believe that. No, there's no question. It's like anything in life. If you're not trying new things, you're not you're not getting anywhere. Yeah. But but the rooms don't matter. Like mm -hmm. that's that's. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't get hung up on being in at any clubs or out of any clubs. I don't think I've ever officially been passed at a single New York City. No one ever sat me down and went, you're past here. I've never had that happen. Meanwhile, I performed one point at Caroline's twice a night, four nights a week. Yeah. And I performed here like night after night after night, but no one is, I don't think I've ever been officially like, like brought in. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't even know what it. I have a lot. You know? I've been, I've been, you know, sat down and got your pass or uh -huh. calling your veil. And then no and spots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yes, Jamie Masada. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, it's so funny because it's like, I. I have this thing, you know, I always, I don't really trip on the clubs. Like, somebody's like, you have to be in this no. club or that club. I go, no. I go, to me, in the city, you can't make a living in the city. No, there's no money. It's impossible. 20 bucks, so 30 I, bucks. So I always tell people, I use the city clubs like a gym. Yeah, of course. I go work out. Yeah. You know, I got to get my muscles stronger. So then when I go on the platform to hit my nine for nine, I'm on the road. That's those are the road gigs, or yeah. the theater gigs, mm -hmm. or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my nine for nine. Yeah, and uh, that's powerlifting talk, by the way. And uh, so I train all these, you know, all this time in the city in these small rooms, and uh, I love the small rooms because I find nuggets there. I find gold. You know, like it's like mining for gold, and you'll be in one of those small little shithole rooms, and then there's that little gold nugget. Yeah, that you that's find, the game. And that's I'm like that's worth this. This is priceless. But well, that's because you love comedy, you love the craft, and that's, or, or or even like tonight, we're in this room. Let's say this room. I don't know how much it shows on camera. I think it does a little. Let's yeah. just let's you just say this was packed this. tonight. Yeah. Let's say it's packed. Right. You, you know, and it, it very well could be tonight. I don't know what the you know, packed tonight. You could go up, you get a ten minute set because it's New York. You're not doing a forty minutes here. Nope, you might exactly. do ten, maybe fifteen if yep. you're lucky. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing eight, ten, twelve and maybe you get 25 bucks. That's at any club, maybe 50, maybe 75, maybe like this is just, no one's making, you're not getting up there tonight and making a thousand bucks, unless yeah. this was your own show that you were producing and yeah. you, but you're, that's not happening. Like yeah. we're, we're coming in tonight, do a spot, we're each gonna do it, maybe make a few dollars, do yeah. 10, 12 minutes. It's your, it's your, it's your train ride to and from the club. Yeah, yeah. Something to eat. Maybe that's some all food. it covers, yeah. yeah. But, but this, let's just say there's, let's just, from what the camera's picking, maybe, maybe there's a hundred people here in this, this section here. I don't know what it, what, you know. And, and, and I, think this place, I think it seats like 200 in here. From the behind the camera, yeah. yeah, if we go. But I'm just talking about the, from what the camera's picking up. Just imagine yeah. it packed, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I go up, I go up, do 10 minutes, bomb horrifically. Christy goes up, crushes amazingly. We both leave here, and it doesn't change anything. Doesn't change a fucking thing. Does nothing for it's your like, career. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It changes nothing for me negatively, and nothing for you positively. Only, exactly. Only for your own bits and what you're working on. Yeah. Maybe you made a couple of dollars. You talk to some comics. You have a good time. Hopefully, you have yeah. some fun. But what you're saying is, and maybe if you're filming, you get a little clip. Maybe you get yeah. 30 seconds of like, here's yeah. a little joke I wrote about the trains that I'm gonna put online. Fine. Right. But 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 it's really you're just working out. So then when you go you know, next weekend to some, a road gig and you are doing a theater, maybe there's three, four or 500,000 people, whatever it is. Right. Now it's like from all the training here, that's what you now put, it's you game put time. into yep. use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's true. And it's like, you know, you got to remember like all these big names don't just go to a stadium or a theater 
and work on new material. Yeah. yeah. You know, they go to the clubs, like they'll go to the, the cellar. The good comics. Yeah, they'll go to the cellar, they'll go to the stand, they'll go somewhere to like work out. But it's like, at the comedy store when I was growing up, we had 15 minute sets mm -hmm. and you had a three minute light. Mm -hmm. You got lit at 12, you're off on 15, and if you went over, let's see, let you yeah. have it. So I, we're, I'm very conditional. And it should thing. be that way because you're messing up all the other comics the who are going. Show, you're messing up the later shows. You're waiting the, the staff audience. who yep. wants to go home. Like if you don't respect the time, like I've gone over it. We all go over it at times because we're yeah. just not. But I'm pretty like that too. I'm like, I want to get, you know, uh, 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 I don't know. You're, you're messing everyone up if you go. Uh, you're, it's yeah, disrespectful it's, it's too. It's so disrespectful. Yeah. And Mitzi instilled that into me my whole life growing up. So. When I go on, I ask them, how long am I doing? 15? Okay, light me at 12. Give me a two to three minute light yeah. because my bits are long. It takes me a minute to wrap up. I don't want to go over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they do. Like then there's clubs down in the village that give you eight minutes. Mm -hmm. If it's a slow night and if it's like a busier night, then they, you know, they kick everybody mm -hmm, to 10 mm -hmm. or if it's a lighter lineup, whatever. But so I'm like, 10 minutes? Okay, light me at seven, seven and a half. They're like, really? And I said, you don't understand. Yeah. I don't want to go over. I don't want to be that person. And if I do go over, it's like a minute. And then I feel guilty. Oh my yeah, God, I did 11. Yeah, that's the most I ever go to. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm I like, oh my ever. God, I did 11. Oh my God. Yeah. And I remember there was nights, you know, pre-pandemic at Dangerfields, which is no longer there, which sucks. It's now Rodney's. But I'm doing it for the first time, the new are one. You? Oh, good. You know, I've been out for a few years, as, yeah. we, as we talked about at the top, but I'm doing Rodney's for the first time this coming weekend. Is it an independent show or is it Book of the House? First, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Fantastic. I know, because Reggie's booking it now. Mm -hmm. I love Reggie. That's what you're saying, love, yeah. Mm -hmm. Love, love. Yeah, nice He's dude. Delicious, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool, cool dude gets it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gets it. Um, but back in the Dangerfields days, old Tony, the Crypt Keeper, you know, that's what I used to call him, mm -hmm. he did not believe that women could close shows because they weren't funny enough as men were. Which is it's Which is so retarded. Yeah, well, stupid. he was 150 years old. So he was of an old... He would, yeah, yeah, he would only let one Latino and one black, the rest white, and if he was lucky, there was a female, but she was not allowed to Insane. close. Insane. So I would close a lot, you uh -huh. know, because Kim Danae at the time was doing a lot of shit for him. So she's like, you're closing the show. It's either me or Dante Nero. And so I would tell her, okay, if I'm closing, can I do five extra minutes? I want to do 15 Yeah. because I'm working. She's mm -hmm. like, I, I want to go over. She goes, how far? Like she's thinking a half hour, like yeah, some of these yeah, assholes. Yeah. I go, five minutes? She goes, yeah. oh, who cares? Go do it. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. I go, no, I just want 15. I don't need, I don't need to do 20 or 30. I mean, it'd be great, uh -huh. but I'm not greedy, but I just want to be able to, because when I grew up, we had 15 minutes. And so we were taught, you know, at an early age, do you start off strong mm -hmm. in the middle, throw in a new joke or two, try Always it, strong. see how it goes and then end strong. Mm -hmm. So that way that new joke, if it falters, kind of waste, no Buffered. one thinks about it. So you start strong and you end strong and they're with you on the, if they don't like it, but if they're, they're still with you. So I've always been that way. So I always ask her, Hey, I'm going to do five extra minutes mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, light me normal and then I'll know it's five. And then, um, what you call it? I go, cause I want to work. Cause I'm going to start off strong. And I would do all my new material right in the middle for like a three, four minute chunk. And then I would close strong with stuff that always worked. And that's how I work. And that's how I've been conditioned. So bigger names that are more seasoned, mm -hmm. the 20, 30, 40 year comics can throw in new shit in the middle of their set because they have done the rest. Sure, sure, They've sure. They've got the 10,000 hours sure. to be an expert kind of thing. But it's funny when you see new jacks <laughs> do it. They just like, huh? Well, that's and they get all upset. I'm like, dude, don't get upset. Walk it off, bro. Walk it off. Yeah, I mean the whole. Uh, I'm I'm 40, so I'm kind of at the cusp of like, I think I'm one of the. La I don't, I don't want to speak. It's very generally. So I'm a, one of the last generations that got into it because of jokes. Yes. Like the craft. I read yes. all the books, the Judy Carters. The oh, uh, Greg, whatever, uh, Greg Dean, maybe. Yes, Greg I Dean. I read all the books. I watched all the Comedy Central Presents. I watched all the Premium Blends. Yep. Before that, I watched the other stuff. Too, you know, but like, I'm one of the generations, cause right before the internet really hit. Yes. Um, so there's kind of, I, I, I kind of see comics as older than me and been doing it long enough about the craft. You do the road, you work, you build, you get good. And I see a lot of comics younger than me. Not that there aren't people who love the craft younger too, but it's now. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, yeah. YouTube Reels, like the that's... Game, yeah, the game yeah. has completely changed. And it's like, I grew up, like Instagram didn't really start hitting, start hitting with like selfies and Kim mm -hmm. Kardashian 
until I was like 40, 41 years old. So for the last 12, 13 years, I'm learning this, you know, and I never got into it because I didn't really know much about it because I was raised with nothing. You know, in the 90s, our way of sending out a status update or an Eventbrite link was putting flyers on windshields sure, in yeah. West Hollywood yeah. for the comedy store for our shows. You know, we started Bringer Shows back in the 90s because we were just looking for pop-up places mm -hmm. to do spots because it was the dark times of comedy. You know, and it's like, you know, it was hard to get audiences out. You'd be on the lineup, you yeah. call the club, hey, is there any audience there? Did the show start? No, not yet. And then, so if you had an 815 spot in the OR on a Tuesday, either that show was canceled or you didn't go on mm -hmm. or you got passed up or the show wouldn't start till 930, you know, because mm -hmm. we had to wait for an audience. Otherwise, it wouldn't be worth it. So it's just like we, you know, I have that hustle in my DNA. So it's like now, like once COVID hit, I got, I had time to stay and isolate and learn all this stuff mm -hmm. and figure it out. I haven't broken the code yet. I'm a fucking idiot, you know, like, but and you, I just you still... may You may never break it. Yeah. Same as me, because it, if I were getting, I'm interrupting a little bit. No. I didn't get into this to do this. I got into it like to write to jokes, jokes and yes. do stand up and love the craft. Yes. If, if I were starting now and like, oh, it's YouTube and Instagram, I'd probably just like go into banking or something. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I would buy a gym and just own it. Yeah, exactly. You do something else because it's just, you know, I still do it for the love of the craft. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I do this podcast because I love the craft and I love talking shop with other comics, mm -hmm. whether they're brand new or 100 years old you know i don't care how long you've been in the game that's why it's old school new school comedy mm -hmm, sure because i want all points of view in here you know and it's it's fun like last week i had a uh a couple or a couple weeks ago i had a kid who uh no it's this weekend the, i don't even know what day it is i know but this last week i had this kid tom crossan mm -hmm. i met him at uh, the stress factory he was doing the Keenan Presents things that they do. Sure. And I had a guest spot on. You know, they put a couple of pros in the mm -hmm, middle. Mm -hmm. So I did one of the guest spots. Barry Ribs closed it. And uh, this kid was great. And he's only like a year in, but he's a retired MMA fighter. Mm. So it was like a nice, interesting, like, yeah, I sure. like, like, oh, that's a different outlook, mm -hmm. you know? And now there's this other kid who contacted me because who knows him? Sure. He's Instagram famous. But he doesn't. He only does open mics. Doesn't have much jokes. Isn't so that I want to get his yeah. point of view. So yeah. I invited him. So I have to wait. He's looking up his calendar. But you know, I like hearing that. Then I have like old guys on. Like I had Wally Collins. Mm -hmm. I had Jim Madrinos. You know, I've had God uh, uh, Rob Bartlett, legend. And mm -hmm. you know, like all these old school comics come on and tell the old stories. And and it's just yeah, it's you know, good. It's just really fun. And I I love this show so much. And I you know. And I thank everybody that listens to it. I, I, I love you guys so much for listening every week and I'm grateful for you and, and you know, but I really enjoy this podcast. Mm -hmm. Even if only one person listened, I would still do it every week. Sure, yeah. Just because I love talking shop. Mm -hmm. So, but um, I love you to death and I'm so glad you were here. Yeah, you know, this is great, goes. yeah. So I always end the show. It's that time of the, it's that time in the, uh, the episode or whatever. I don't even know how to introduce this. Yeah. But it's the two questions that this I always segment. ask. Yeah. yeah, this is my segment. It's my thing. It's fun. No one does it like this, like, you know, but it's fun and it makes me laugh. And uh, so the two question segment is question one. Is there a joke a comic has done that made you go, God damn, that's brilliant. Yeah. I wish I had written that. What was it? Well, obviously there's a million of them. Oh no, I have zillions. Um, but here's what I was thinking of recently. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up, so I don't. That's okay. I don't obviously not to do this person discredit to. No, watch sorry it. about the mic. the mic. Sorry <laughs> about the mic. Sorry, to, I don't want to dis. I don't want to mess up the jokes, but you'll understand why it's so good when yes, I. Yes. So, of course. Um, do I say who it is first? Yes. Bonnie McFarlane. Great. Um, she has, and, and she does it like as a throwaway. Okay. Um, and those are some of my favorite jokes. Oh, yeah. They're just kind of talked over. Yeah. Like the best. Yeah. But she's, it, it's, I think it's to set up another joke, but she's basically like, I'm not dumb per se. Mm hmm. Like, right? Because it's per se. Yeah. Like, I'm, she's like, I'm not dumb per se, but, and then she like keeps talking. And I'm like, hilarious. I'm like, damn, that's so good. I'm not dumb per se. It's yep. five words. Yeah. And it's so. And she might say I'm not stupid per se. Well, however, matter. but, but you, the, the per se I'm like, is the joke. Fuck, that it's is so point. short and she's, so good. She's and then she just talks writer. over it. So she's you a, either catch it or you don't. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, Wally Collins has one of those jokes that I that I love. Yeah. Like that that's a throwaway. He talks about his wife. He's married to a Dominican uh -huh. woman. 
and he's like, you know, she's great. She's cooked. She's crazy. She bats 337. She's this. Uh -huh. And at the bats 337, yeah. I literally fell down. Uh -huh. We were doing a Jersey City together. And I'm screaming in the back. And, and no one's getting going. it. It just keeps going. Those are he my favorite it. jokes. Yeah. He just, he's a, she does this. She does uh -huh. this. She bats 337. She does this. Or this. And I'm screaming, bats yeah. 337. Uh -huh. That's genius. Yeah, like maybe a third of the crowd gets it. Yeah, right? if you're not New even Yorkers, New York yeah, baseball yeah. fans get it. Or just even those kind of jokes where someone talks through. Like, I'm yeah. not dumb per se, but anyway, this yeah. like only a couple people catch it. And you go, yeah. fuck, that's good. Yeah, that's it's fun. It's just so uh, economy of words, yep. sharp, smart. She's so funny in general. Yeah. She's a really great writer. So fucking funny. She's like, to me, the live action Daria. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen good, I haven't seen anybody in a few years because I'm taking a few years off. I did a show with her at the Meadowlands. So fucking funny ago. though. Yeah, like, she was great. So funny. She was fantastic. So funny. And uh, but uh, okay, so now the last thing I always ask because you know I'm an old school comic and this is how I grew up in green rooms with other comics. Yeah. Trying to make each other laugh with stupid street jokes or dad jokes. Yeah. Do you have a go-to street joke? I don't know if it's a street joke. I'll tell you one of my favorite, another one of my favorite jokes. Okay. I don't know if it's a particular street joke. I don't know who said it. Maybe you do. I, I feel like I have an idea who might say, but I'm not sure. But this, and I'm going to go old school be, okay. because it it might not work in today's time as much given our culture. Who cares? It's, but it's one of my favorite thing. jokes. Yeah. Like, funny is funny. I don't get it. And you'll see why it's like, so, um, ah, fuck, I forget who. Maybe you know who said it. I've been okay. trying to find out from people. Okay. It's, um, I recently had a threesome, but it was a bad kind. It was me and another guy. And another guy. <laughs> I don't know whose joke familiar. that is. Yeah. It might be David Cross. Man. It might be a tell. But I, I've told it to a million people. I don't know where I heard it or who. And I've told it to other comics. And everyone, all the comics, like, oh, it's fucking good, right? You know, that's a little tough. That topic's a little tougher in today's yeah. climate. But that joke, because you, you set it up as me and another guy. I mean, yeah, like, okay, like I you're thinking, oh, three somethings. Like, and, and another, another guy. guy. Like, like, he bombed like, at it. Yeah. It's great. It's fantastic. And I don't know whose it is. And we'll, we'll fi I'll find out, and then I'll get back to I've you. I've been trying ask, for years to old, figure that out. I'll ask my other colleagues that know everything like that. Lance, I adore you. This was great. I'm, so glad. I'm glad you're yeah. back in the groove, dude. It's I'm great. getting there. Do some yeah, shows I'm getting together, there. Dude. Yeah, we'll definitely. Have to hit it running together. So tell everybody out in old school land, old school new wow. school land, where they can find you on the socials. I'm I'm party with Lance on all the stuff. My website's party with Lance and all the social things. Party with Lance. Nice. Follow him, everybody, and don't forget to follow me as well, Christy Miller yeah, Comedy of on all the socials. Follow the show at Old School New School Comedy on Instagram. And, you know, follow us, like us, love us, subscribe to the channels, and share the yeah. show. We love you. Bye -bye.